Well, hi, welcome to The Christian Contrast, where we talk about how walking with Jesus leads us to live differently than those in the world around us. And I'm really excited about this episode. Uh, We're in the middle of an emphasis on prayer at LBF Church. And so I'm here with some members of our pastoral team. We got Lori Baez, our pastor of Over Life Kids Ministry. Hello. Got Andy Watson, our worship pastor. And Phil Shabazz, our pastor of Community Life. And Dan. Hey guys, um, I'm excited about this. You know, I I think that a lot of us have experienced this as we've had conversations with members of our congregation about prayer. Um, Nobody's putting up resistance to saying prayer isn't something we should do. Everybody's recognizing this. And what I've experienced so much is people saying, I want to do this. I want to do this more, which which is most of us feel like there's a gap between what we want our prayer lives to be and what they currently are. Um, I've just experienced an abundance of people saying, I just don't know how. And a real openness to sort of the practical inner workings. I I think there might have been a time where people were more resistant to some guidance on prayer because we didn't want to get into legalism and we didn't want to get into sort of uh, empty routines. But there's just a ton of openness of saying, I, I want some guidance on that. And so... I'm hoping for this episode to help with that. Um, in a couple of weeks, we'll release a second episode with the other four members of our pastoral team kind of doing the same thing. But our goal today is for the four of us just to get a little bit personal and to talk about what we do in our prayer times. None of us is exactly where we think we should be. We, we all have room for growth, but um, what we're doing in our prayer lives, what's working, what's been joyful, maybe what we want to grow in and what unique things we've come across that have been a help to us that might be a help to others. Um, so here's what I'd love to do in a start, and, and we can, you know, anybody who feels led to start can start. Um, let's just talk a little bit about our prayer habits. Um, and so if you want to talk about it, if it makes more sense to you to talk about it in terms of this is sort of what it's like over the course of a week, or if you have habits that it makes more sense to say this is kind of what it looks like each day, um, let's just talk about what we're doing maybe to paint a picture of some different ways that we pursue the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, you want to start us off with that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you looked ready. You yeah, were just ready like... Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think th- the first thing I want to say is that um, uh, th- what's what's been um, a blessing about being on a pastor's team is that not only do you get to serve as a pastor and create meaningful relationships with people within our church community, but you also get pastored as well. Hmm. Um, I'm surrounded by pastors constantly. And, you know, Dan, yourself, Lori, Andy, there have been moments where all three of you have pastored me in different ways. The reason I bring this up is because my hope is that people listening or watching this begin to take away the pressure from what it means to bring yourself to God, to, to Hmm. pray. Oftentimes we put pressure and expectation on us that we feel like we don't, we can't meet. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, we, in a variety of different things in our lives, but specifically in prayer, in terms of our spiritual life, we say, I just, I don't know how to do this, so I'm just not going to do it. When there are little things that you can do that count, that bring you closer and closer to being comfortable to bring yourself in a relationship with God through prayer. And This has been a constant, like it's been a constant, ever-changing, evolving journey for me. And right now in my family, there's three different ways I approach it. And I want to be clear, like in many ways over the course of the the past, I don't know, year and a half to two years, this, the prayer has been something that we might have just been sort of, we're, we're sort of now presenting this to the church as a really important vision area for us. But it's something we've all been walking through now for Mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. And the arc of learning and the arc of growing that I've had just in the past year and a half has been really meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And each of you and others on the team have um, affected me in that regard. And I've learned from you guys in that regard as well, which I'm really grateful for. And so there are three different ways that I think prayer is, has been a part of my life, I'd say over the past year. Number one is I do not waste time in the car. Um, In the past, my drive to work and back was taken up by a podcast. And specifically, um, sometimes it'd be some sort of a news podcast or something where I can like sort of catch up on what's going on with US politics. Folks, I have cut that out completely. (laughs) 
It's, it's no longer, and trust me, if, you, if this is you and you're like, how can I not listen to what's going on? Trust me, if you cut it out, there will be, this burden just lifts. Hmm. It's amazing how the, this burden just lifts. Sounds like the, the first great decision in this was yeah. that. Was that, <laughs> yeah. it really was that. And I'm, I wanna be clear, like whether you're listening to Ben Shapiro or The Daily from New York Times, it doesn't matter. Cut it out and that is gonna be a burden that lifts. And I've replaced it with a couple things. I've replaced it with listening to the Bible while I drive and then taking a portion of that time and just praying through it. Mm -hmm. And what I do during that time is I use the beats of the Lord's Prayer to take me through my prayer time. That's what I do. And I've come to really, really enjoy it. Like one of the things that as director in Hollywood talked about how um, LA can be one of the loneliest places on earth because we're in our cars by ourselves so much out of the day. And um, if, if, if that's your quiet place, and our lives can be hectic and bonkers, if that's your quiet place, use, utilize it, right? Utilize that place. Um, you talked about uh, from the Pete Grieg book, How to Pray, finding your seat, finding your chair. That has become my chair. Like it feels instinctive now to sit down hmm. and be ready hmm to listen to God's word and pray. And again, I don't put, put pressure on myself to uh, like follow some outline. If I'm feeling like, okay, I need to talk to you, God, right now, I do it right just as, as soon as I start the car and just start talking. If I feel like, uh, you know what, I wanna continue in the Psalms or continue in the Proverbs, or I wanna re-listen to um, the chapter we talked about in Matthew or something that's coming up, I'll do that, whatever it is. Um, however, I sort of am prompted, I will follow. So that's that's number one. Number two, and I'll be short with these to, to let everybody else have a chance to talk, but we've incorporated prayer time into our dinners as a family, and then we've incorporated prayer time into um, uh, time with Amy in terms of walks together, and that's mm -hmm. something I have to thank my friend Andy for in terms of his advice. So I think that's good. That's a good transition. That is. Right? That's yeah, right. Yeah, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, prayer is... is uh, an unending journey. It's not like we arrive and we figure it out. And um, in the beginning, maybe that can feel overwhelming, but I actually think of it as that's part of the gift, right? Mm -hmm. That we can always be growing. And the Lord is so kind um, to reveal new parts about himself on that journey. And um, I, I feel like my prayer life used to be, um, man, God, these are the things that I have going on. Would you bless them? Would you... Uh, uh, be with these people in my life that are struggling or uh, and then uh, that would be a lot of what it consisted of and uh, you know we've been talking this idea of prayer is union with God and uh, man the past couple years uh, that has been fleshed out in my life and um, allowing space not trying to rush through uh, my prayer life. Um, there's a, a an incredible app that I'm going to plug. Well, there's two, but the first one is called the Pause app um, by John Eldridge and his team at Wild at Heart. They've created this, and uh, specifically, there's a, a 30 day um, prayer time uh, based on one of his books called Resilient, and it's just this idea of there's there's different steps that he walks through, but so much of it is just practice in union with God. And he, he leads us through kind of these um, uh, devotional times through these uh, meditation times in that. And it's just been awesome. Uh, I did some this morning and it just was really good. Uh, another thing is uh, the uh, Lectio 365 app has been such a gift and it's Pete Gregg and his ministry mm -hmm. um, put that together. And uh, it's about 10 minutes a day uh, they walk through what I what I love is is how they um, use scripture and prayer and they link them together and that's been something that um, man I have grown in so much and uh, just specifically wanting to hear from the Lord uh, man he so easily speaks to us through his word this morning just meditating on Psalm ninety one. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I do a psalm a day and, and just instead of reading through and being like, okay, check, I got that. Trying to use those words and and uh, and pray that out has been a real blessing. And, and yeah, like Phil talked about, um, Laura and I have been pretty intentional uh, 
we walk the dog and we get to a certain street and no matter what we're talking about it's all right we transition to prayer mm. together and, and just praying out loud with my wife has been one of the biggest blessings and the biggest areas of growth um so those are kind of the main things yeah. awesome thanks andy yeah, yeah. Lori, how about you so um for me like talking about if people feel overwhelmed or really frustrated there was a season of my life that um it, prayer was frustrating to me and um, I felt like I wasn't doing it right or I would set specific times and then when I would fail and not get that done I would be very frustrated about that and um, so uh, what I started doing and this has probably been over the course of the last three years maybe a little bit longer was um Every morning, the moment that I opened my eyes, I would just say a prayer of thanksgiving, anything mm. that I was thankful for, and try mm. and start my day off with something that was thankful, because I can get wrapped up in my head about all the things that didn't go right or critique. So I was like, um, so every morning when I wake up, I'm either trying to just praise God for who he is and what, or the things that are thankful. Um, and before I go to sleep, I thank him for the things of the day. And also ask him to work on my heart and the failures mm. that I've done. So those are like two little bookends of my day. Um, but even when my kids were younger, I started thinking about like when we teach our kids, like not that praying at dinner time is bad. That's great. But I kind of wanted to incorporate really letting them know like you don't have to wait for a specific time or to sit out dinner. Mm. You can pray at any time. So – um, when they were younger, if we were driving, if there was a car accident, if there, mm. we would just start like to pray about those things. Um, and now I have found that certain locations, you were talking about a street and mm. walking in that certain locations are times that I do things. The radio in my car several years mm. ago broke. And um, that was a time where I would drive in silence and be, and I'm like, why am I not praying while mm. I'm driving? And so now that is a regular ongoing thing, even if it's to the grocery store or mm. whatever, yeah. of a time that I pray while I'm in my car. Um, it sounds crazy, but when I'm in the shower, I pray. It's like I think it started when my kids were really young, and You're just that was for any quiet any moment, sp quiet yeah. <laughs> space that was there. And the shower was one of those. And that is a time that I actually really feel like the Lord speaks to me is when I'm in the shower. So um, I have learned instead of like setting a specific time or or being disappointed about that that I haven't done it that just certain locations that I'm mm -hmm. in, those are my seats. So I don't have one specific seat, yeah. but I have different places that are my seats. And then um, when I am into scripture, I've been just using the Bible app that does the little devotional. It's mm -hmm. like one verse, but um, I love that it has like somebody that speaks a little bit about that verse. And then there's a prayer time and it'll walk you through focusing, listening on God. So if you don't know where to start, it's a nice little mm. simple place that lays out and it's five to 10 minutes. And um, I have found that that's been really fruitful for me nice. to use. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, I, I think in some ways all of you were alluding to this, but um, I, I remember reading a quote several years ago is from Thomas Burton, who Thomas Merton, who was a monk in the 20th century. And uh, I won't get it exactly right, but what he basically said is, we need to always remember that whenever we're coming to prayer, we always come as beginners. And and maybe similar to what some of you said, somebody could say, oh, that's sad. But for me, I, I felt this deep amount of comfort in that because mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I've been a Christian for over 40 years now. I'm a mm -hmm. pastor and all of this. And I still feel very much just like, a child trying to figure this out with prayer. Mm. Um, and I know people are different. For me, I, I've just found with myself, routine is such a powerful, I think, gift that God has given us. Um, and so I think of it almost like uh, sometimes if you're married, sometimes you're out on a date and uh, you, you just talk because there's just stuff to talk about. And other times you're almost like, well, 
what do we talk about? And you might have like, some people have activities where it's like, hey, pull questions out of a hat and, and ask them to each other to like, just get the things going a little bit. And I have found similar to, to what you were saying, um, Andy, that sometimes when I'm praying, I'm just, I, I don't need any prompt, just there's things on my heart, I'm just praying. But I do use the the Lord's Prayer, the, the beats that you were talking about, Phil, there's kind of the, it, for me, I see them as five beats. Mm -hmm. It's been incredibly helpful mm -hmm. to me in just providing a framework. And also I feel like when I don't, I miss elements of what I want my prayer life to be. And I say, well, I like, I did that whole thing. I, I didn't take time to ever really yield and recognize that there's things that I'm prioritizing over what God says is important, or I didn't take any time for confession. I realized my previously with, with the previous habits that I had, I was like, I'm doing praying regularly. I'm not setting aside any time for reflection and confession mm. and doing the Lord's mm -hmm. prayer has brought that out daily where, you know, sometimes it's not very long. Some days it's like, this is taking a while. Like I've got <laughs> some stuff that I need to confess to the Lord. Um, so that's been, an, and you know, again, the, this is partly because I don't think I'm naturally an organized person, but I respond really well to those prompts. So I do try to set aside, I, I talked about in a sermon, 30 minutes. For me, that's just a golden time where I feel like it's enough time to really connect my heart with the Lord in a way that's not rushed. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I typically do it walking. Like I, I, I have a hard time praying when my body's not moving. And I, I feel like when I'm on my prayer walks, I just feel like the Lord is right next to me and we're just walking and talking the same way that Karina and I do when we walk and talk. And so, there's something about being outside. Uh, that too, uh, man. You know, specifically being yeah. in nature, like a way, so, so much of our lives are spent indoors. And, yes. and even like our recreation is movie theaters or gymnasiums <laughs> or inside restaurants. And it's like, man, when you can get outside, away from the busyness and in creation it's yeah easier to well and then uh, there are you know it's it's the added bonus like you were saying of those spontaneous moments where you're praying and you know so maybe you're going through your prayer list of different people and families and suddenly you look up and you see this majestic thing on a mountain or you see that the sunrise or sunset is happening and you get a spontaneous moment of worship that you wouldn't have got just sitting mm -hmm. in your room yeah. and so for me, it feeds my soul in really powerful ways. Yeah. Um, and then just the other thing that that I'll add in about this, and and you know, you all can weigh in if if you have some different ways of doing this. But part of our prayer lives, um, obviously, is praying for others in our lives. It's not everything that we do, but it's part of what we do. Um, and I felt like you know, my my immediate family, Karina and, and Matt, Jack, and David, those are the ones that I'm like, whatever is happening every day, I pray for them. And then there's others that I sort of rotate on more of a weekly basis that that I try to commit to pray for. Um, I felt like a while ago, God sort of led me to specific prayers for each of them. Mm -hmm. And it's not, th there have been some times where I've added or they've changed, but I think that that there was insight into the prayers that I was led to that, that have to do with battles each of them fight. Um, and so in many ways for the four of them, I pray other things, but I pray like the same thing in almost the same words just about every day for them because mm -hmm. I feel like they're sort of lifelong prayers for them. Um, and then there's others. I rotate through praying for my extended family, praying for all of our pastoral team and our families, praying for the elder. You know, there, there's other people that I sort of pray for throughout the week. But maybe before moving on to, to what I want to ask about next, um, if anybody, it doesn't have to be everybody, but if anybody wants to weigh in on here's how I've incorporated praying for others into my prayer life um, while avoiding just all I do is sort of ask for stuff and then say bye to God, that, that there is still the communing, the union with God, but we are praying for other people. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, you know, I think um, believing that prayer really works and makes a difference has been just such a, a huge shift. Um, I think it can be easy just to throw out casual prayers. And uh, I've really, you know, we gather on Monday evenings, um, a group of us uh, in, just in the worship center to pray together. That's another thing that has really changed my prayer life is praying with other believers um, has been huge. But I think uh, the importance of testimony and, mm -hmm. and sharing when God has answered prayers has has been so encouraging and uh just a, a motivation to keep praying um for other people and just remembering recalling back how he's been faithful 
in those uh, the ways that he's answered mm-hmm. prayers. Yeah. I I've, I keep a list on my iPhone, so I have a I have a notes section on my iPhone, and what I realize is that oftentimes I might tell somebody, "Hey, I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you," and then I'd forget. And so now I've just made it a habit where if somebody, if I hear something, if somebody talks to me or something like that, I'll, I have a, the prayer note section on my iPhone. I put it on my iPhone in the notes. And then when I'm praying, I just have that note, those notes up. And I sort of do something similar to you, Dan. I begin with my kids, with my family, with Amy, and then I work my down, way down through whomever's on that list. And then after that, just whatever I'm prompted for. Um, and in addition to that, I do want to just a couple brief things. Um, uh, I've heard a lot from folks um, that I'm always worried about falling asleep. <laughs> it's a lot harder to fall asleep if you're walking and praying. Or driving. Running and praying. Or yeah. driving. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really good. God willing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's okay. There's, there's no shame in trying to incorporate some strategy. Absolutely. If, if you need to incorporate some strategy. Mm-hmm. And then that monk quote was awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I don't know that any of us here or on staff are going to be like, hey, I figured it out. And now I've achieved peak personal holiness. <laughs> right. None of, none of us are like that. Again, cut the pressure away because your pastors aren't like that yeah. either. I think that we, what we would probably say is we are, we've recognized that figuring it out is important mm-hmm. and we're mm-hmm. in a constant state of trying to figure it out and trying to get closer to God. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, off of that thought, I think um, I was talking earlier just about failing and feeling. Sure. And um, I think that's been over the last couple of years – the biggest growth f- for me in my prayer life was releasing the pressure of trying to do it right or follow a certain guide or do certain things and allow myself to struggle through some things. And it's okay if it's a struggle. So all of you know, I talk a lot. <laughs> um, so I joke sometimes that God's probably like, and enough. Um <laughs> Not really, but uh, but being quiet and listening is mm. not one of my good skill sets. And so that's been something that um, I have tried to lean into, super uncomfortable for me, but have tried to lean into. And that has surprisingly developed into a very new joy in my prayer life, mm. which once was a frustration and kind of would produce some anxiety. Um, I started just being like, okay, I'm going to be quiet for two minutes, like, and Mm. then when you start to see when you're quiet, that God is faithful and lays certain people on your heart that you never, that weren't on your list, that you would never have thought of, or certain occasions, or even things that are like, oh, I was wrong in that, but would have never realized it in the midst of that quiet, then it encourages you to lean in more. But you have to like, start out with the this is making me super uncomfortable and being okay with walking away and being like that three minutes, I don't feel like there was anything, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it again. Um, has been one of the, the big things for me. So that's cool. And uh, in in a minute, I want to pick right up on what Lori was saying. First, I just got to throw this in because Andy, you were talking about, um, recognizing answered prayers and just the testimony of that. So just probably two or three nights ago, um, Karina and I, like something really cool happened that, uh, was a surprise with, it was not something we anticipated, but was sort of like some good news that we got about something. And, uh, and it was funny cause it actually took me a minute to make the connection. And I told her like, that actually is an answer to like a weekly, like it, it wasn't, it, I, I can't say it was a daily prayer, but a weekly prayer that I've been praying for months. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't even say I've been praying in deep anticipation of it happening. It wasn't trending towards it happening. It didn't seem impossible, but I was like, no, I'm going to be faithful to pray. So it wasn't just routine, but it it really did almost take a minute. I feel like almost Satan wanted us to not make the connection Mm -hmm. to be like, this isn't it. We get to celebrate this answer to prayer and to persevering prayer to some degree. Um, But Lori, I love what you were saying, because you were talking about um, with the listening thing with uh, sort of a burden turning into a joy. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'd love for us to talk a little bit now. Like we we all have felt this. We know most of us as believers feel this sense of like, ah, my, my prayer life is not what it should be. And we feel this sort of pressure or burden towards prayer. Some of that might, might even be appropriate if we respond rightly, but um, let's talk about some joys in prayer mm-hmm. because our whole uh, tone that we're wanting to have 
during this emphasis is not we have to pray, we get to pray. Mm -hmm. We pray to experience union with God. And so let's just spend a little bit of time talking about what have been some of the joys that we've experienced in our prayer life that we would have missed out on if we would have not been purposeful in cultivating this. And Laura, you know, you already talked about it. You yeah. can talk more, you can talk about something different, but you shared about the listening thing, which was such a cool thing to turn from a, a burden to a joy. Well, um, one of the, the other thing that was coming to my mind when you were talking about that is um, I have a longtime girlfriend, have been friends with her since kindergarten, all the way growing up. Um, and uh, recently in our lives, like we would get together and have coffee or that sort of thing. But um, we started praying for each other out loud praying for each other, which um, wasn't something that we had done, even though, I mean, we both have been in faith and growing together. Um, but I think one of the joys was hearing somebody else pray. I know sometimes it can be like, oh, they're a way better prayer than I am. or And there's this comparison that happens. Um, but it was a really sweet like joy was to hear her pray in such a personal way hmm. to our heavenly father and um just be like she was talking to her dad kind of a hmm. thing and um during those moments when she was praying i was like that like yes we need to be reverent we need hmm. but there was this tenderness that was like that is what I want out of, not the mm. words, not that, but that. And so um, I think because of her being vulnerable and allowing us That's to have cool. that experience, mm. um, I have been able to let go of some of those, I don't know, rigid type portions mm. and be like, that's right. Yeah. We can reach up there and grab his hand. And mm. I think that's oh, been that's a awesome. huge joy. Yeah. yeah, man, I think just uh, experiencing God's kindness um, as I have uh, pushed myself uh, over the weekend, I was memorizing uh, Proverbs 3, uh, trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It goes on. Um, but just over and over, uh, trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. And, um, I was in the grocery store and someone came up to my son, Jack and I, and we were talking for a little bit. Uh, I'd met uh, this this guy at our church a couple of weeks ago, not really spent that much time with him, but just felt the Lord say, hey, you're supposed to pray with this guy in the store. And I'm like, ah, oh, right here, right now. I don't know if I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, you sure? Uh, so kind of just like, and, you know, you have those mental mm -hmm. battles that go on in your mind. And I asked him, I was like, well, man, how can we be praying for you? And uh, he just said, uh, you know that I would trust in the Lord and, and just not lean on my own understanding. <laughs> and just God's kindness in that moment mm -hmm. to say, I see you, I see this guy, I'm in this, I care about you. It was just, uh, and it was just a joy to pray for him. And just his response uh, in that moment when we prayed for him was so powerful. When we pray for people, it's like, man, the difference that can happen in the spiritual realm is incredible. It's, it's so much more than if I'd have just said a few nice words about him and to him. But it's like the God of the universe is involved and he's in our midst. And that, that is amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Real quick before going to Phil, because I appreciate that story, Andy. Um, for for the four of us here, is it? Do all of you guys feel like that I should pray for this person? But there's a part of me that really doesn't want to right now. That feels really uncomfortable with the because I do. Like even on a Sunday between services, this happened to me. I can't remember if it was last Sunday or the the Sunday before, where there was a case. It was clear mm. with this guy was sharing stuff like, "Pray for him now." And I like, I almost talked myself out of it. And I'm a pastor. I'm just like, this is, it was so obvious. And, and thankfully I did. And it was deeply meaningful to him. And it was a great moment. But man, I feel like every time I'm prompted, just pray for that person now, there's another voice being like, no, it's going to be awkward. Don't mm -hmm. do it. Walk away. You got other stuff to do. So I, I don't know if everybody feels that way. I'm just saying, I I never feel like, I'm going to pray for this person, and there's no competing conflict of desires there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Andy at the prayer ministry 
um, meeting this past Sunday showed that video. What was who's the John Chris. John, Chris. John, John Chris video where he very much did a bit about praying for people, but then not knowing how to like what's their custom or what's their <laughs> denomination. What do you do? Do you kneel? Do you what? Do we hold hands? What do we put in your hand? Like all that stuff is part of it and makes it feel awkward. But I just feel like um, uh, the Lord will prompt you, and if He prompts you, you move forward with that prompt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If He prompts you, move forward with that prompt. What are you going to lose? What's going to happen? Like. You're gonna be embarrassed for a little bit. Like what's like, you're being your God in heaven. Mm -hmm. And as the result of that can only be blessing either right there or in the future. So um, yeah, I feel the same way, Dan. Sometimes I'm like, should I, it's awkward. I'm not sure, is this the right time? Um, or somebody has like, this has happened quite frequently the past year where I might get a phone call or a text from somebody at the church saying, I need to be prayed for right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be like, okay, just here's here's where I am. And sometimes it's been right in the middle of a Sunday morning or right in the middle of college ministry or something like that. And just come on over. And then I ask the rest of the group, like, hey, just give me a few minutes, keep discussing on your own, and I'll be right back. Oh. Um, so if God places it in front of you, take just roll the dice and follow his lead, yeah. right? Roll the dice yeah. and follow yeah. his lead. I, and I've, it takes practice. I've yeah. tried to not say, well, man, I'll be praying for yeah. you. Yeah. And just change, can I pray for you now? And I don't always do that, but that's what I'm trying to implement in my life. Yeah. Well, the, there was a guy, I was sharing, I shared this with Andy after it happened, but there was a guy at the gym, um, I don't know, maybe like a month ago now, who it was like, we, we, we see, well, I, he's probably there more than I am. This guy's like the incredible Hulk. He's, he's massive. But every time I'm there, I see him and we've kind of politely interacted and, uh, we were talking, uh, one day and he, he had a wrist brace on. So I just asked him about it and he talked about, he was, you know, going to be going in for surgery on it. And it was something that had, you know, been irking him for a long time. Um, and I, I didn't know him. I didn't know any of his belief system or anything. And I just said, you know, can I pray for you about that right now? Um, and he was all about it. I mean, he was so excited to be prayed for. And uh, and now every time, well, first of all, every time we see each other now, we've had that connection. But also he came back um, like a week later and the problem that he was having post-surgery with his wrist was gone. Mm. It was healed. It was just all better. And so... It was just, you know, a little bit awkward, but we were standing there in the gym, arms around each other, just two guys in the middle of it praying, and God worked through that. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know that there's ever been an occasion where I've said, can I pray for you? And someone is like, no. Right. Or yeah. that walking away from it, that you ever were like, that wasn't the right decision. Right, like, right. I just, as much... Um, there are times where that seems very natural, and there are times where you're like, really, right here, like right now, <laughs> like we, I don't. Uh, um, but even in those, when you say yes, I don't know that I've ever had an experience walking away from that being like that was the wrong. Yeah, decision. I shouldn't have done shouldn't that. Right have done there. that. You know, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. But but Phil, for you, anything come to mind just as a special joy that you feel like, man, we feel like prayer is a burden, but here's a joy that I've. I'll tell you the first joy right off the bat is hearing that Andy's memorizing Proverbs. Like yeah, that is a that's joke. finally yeah. 10 years and he recognizes like your the work is done here. My work is finished. Like, you can quit. You're, you're ready to be taken up to heaven. It's man. incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I think that like the, the, the first thing on my mind regarding um, the joy I feel is a, is that now I'm in a place where if something good happens, like you were describing my immediate response is Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think that of all the different things that I've tried to implement in prayer, trying to make part of my daily routine, and Lori, you talked about this earlier, <laughs> being in a place where you are leading with thanksgiving mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. profoundly healing and moving. And uh, it, 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 it heals, like it, it really does something to your heart when regardless of your circumstance. And, and, and this is something like Amy and I had to practice during our mm -hmm. most difficult times with Jordan, mm -hmm. certainly the last time when he was in the hospital, that we're praying for him. We're going to, regardless of the circumstances, find something to thank God for mm -hmm. within the um, grief and start there. And to start there has, has stuck with me. And so as a result, the natural response has been, if something good happens 
or if there's a blessing, I try and call out that blessing mm. to the holiest of holies right away. And there's something wonderful and comforting about being able to call out your blessings to your God as well as your grief, because hmm. He hears them both and accepts them both equally. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that's been that's been an important thing. I think the other thing is also like, um, we've talked about like when we've done um, strengths and spiritual gifts stuff in the past here at the church. We've talked about how one moment, just one moment, one interaction with one person can change the whole of the course of the rest of your day. Just one moment can ruin it or bring light into it, okay? Now, imagine just rewinding back to when we first started this podcast today, that if you were listening to a political podcast and you were fired up in your car and somebody cuts you off, what your response will be. Or if you're praying and what your response might be. Mm -hmm. Now, another, in regard to some of our conversation regarding the pressure and expectations that we've placed on us, my hope is that, well, I'll rephrase. I know for me, for a long time, I used to beat myself up about not being able to get up at 5.30 in the morning and like have this wonderful holy time. It's not in my DNA. It's not there. I wake up at 10 o'clock at night. And so, <laughs> so if, I, if I go to bed at 9 p.m. or go to bed at 1 a.m. and have to wake up at 6 a.m., I'm going to feel the same way regardless mm -hmm. of the time I went to bed. It's just how I've been made, right? It takes me a little bit of time to start up my day and I wake up at different times. Um, to be able to take the pressure off having to um, step into some specific mold of how this works has mm -hmm. been w very healing. Yeah, It's been very healing. Mm -hmm. And so to know now that um, when uh, I make sure to incorporate my prayer time, my relationship with God, where I communicate with Him and then hold on to what He has to communicate to me into mm -hmm. my days, imagine the moment that's the moment then dic that dictates the day. Hmm. That's the moment that, that creates the cadence for the day and prepares you for the tougher moments for the day. Another thing briefly is that I don't think anybody's here doing the podcast or anybody we know probably wakes up in the morning wanting to be the bad guy in the day. Hmm. Like I'm going to be the bad guy and I'm going to do my best to try and either devalue somebody or hurt somebody's feelings or make sure they, you know, they, that, that, that I, I jab them in the side. That's not who we want to be, right? And if we believe that about ourselves, that that's not, I don't want to be the bad guy for the day, you probably will then believe that others don't want to be the bad guy for the day as well. And yet there have been times in our lives where we've been the bad guy for the day, where we have devalued or hurt somebody. And we certainly can remember the times where somebody has devalued or hurt us mm -hmm. as well. Man, just finding a way into prayer just taking your your beats mm. to be able to bring your bring your stuff to God, yeah. thank Him for the things He's brought to you, really does change the cadence for the day. It adds something to the day, and it keeps you at least that much closer from being the bad guy. <laughs> That's good, man. Yeah. That's, yeah. I think of um, the Lord's desire to be involved in each moment in yeah. our day, and uh, specifically like. Uh, the meetings I have with people just trying to be in the habit of God, come into this, give me the words to say, uh, and then coming out of uh, times, stressful times, good times, God, just I give this to you. Like, uh, I trust you with it. You, 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 Holy Spirit, you're living through me. Um, come into this has just been uh, the biggest joy and the biggest uh, relief, too, um, in my prayer life as I walk, hopefully in union with God more yeah. and more. Well, and that's been huge for for me. Uh, a little bit of what you were saying there, Andy, where I, I have felt, it, and I wish this was different. I feel bad even to say this, but um, I rarely. I usually have my my prayer time in the morning. I rarely, when I'm getting ready for that prayer walk, don't have some part of me that's like, I don't want to do this. Like that usually is still. I'm kind of like, I'd rather do something else. I'd rather just watch something or or just kind of veg out. And so there is a part where I feel like all my life prayer has kind of felt like work. Mm. And I I think that there's probably a part of that that is like, maybe a part of that is appropriate. Like prayer is, we, we talk about laboring and prayer. So I think there may be some aspect where it's like, all right, it's okay that that there's a, a, a way that we need to put forth effort for this, for this good thing. But I started really asking God to, to make... Uh, to make me experience more joy in our prayer times. And one of the things that I felt like I came to is saying, um, 
I may feel at the beginning of the prayer time like it's kind of a burden. I shouldn't feel that way at the end of the time. Mm. And I feel like I've consistently had the experience, um, in particular, when I'm bringing my burdens to the Lord. You know, like First yeah. Peter 5 says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, um, bringing your burden, casting your cares on him because he cares for you. So I do, similar to what you were saying, Andy, what, one of the things that I do when I get to the um, give us today our daily bread is I, I thank God for his provision and I pray for that provision for my family and that we'll be content. But then what I usually do is, is I take that to be, um, God, I'm asking you to give me today what I need for today. So I, mm. I'll pray through, you know, hey, we're having our 8 a.m. staff meeting. Father, give me the the wisdom and the energy and the kindness that I need for that. Mm. Okay, after that, I've got this. I'm going to do some study time. I'm going to lunch with this person. I have this meeting. Yeah. You know, I'll later on be with my family, you know, even dinner times with family. And I'll start trying to pray through what are all the different things that are going to happen. And not only does it bring purpose to those things, but it brings me this relief of mm. not having the weight of the world on my shoulders. And yeah. I do come out of those prayer times lighter than I went in. And that to me is one of the greatest joys that I experience in prayer. It's awesome. Yeah. So, so here's, here's what I want to ask, maybe, maybe as a last thing. And if each of us have a little something here, that'd be great. Um, we've already referred to it, but sometimes we got to get creative with our prayer lives. And sometimes we find that there's something out of the box that that clicks. You know, Phil, you talked about the car thing, you know, Andy about apps. Laura, you were talking about, hey, find in any place that, you know, the shower, the car, wherever it is. Um, if you feel like, if, if either you wanna say a little bit more about something you already said, or, or you just wanna throw out for people who are looking for something that might connect with them, something a little bit out of the box that you've said, I didn't even know this was allowed in my prayer life, but now I do it, and man, it's really helped me. Mm. Yeah, so uh, earlier I referred to advice, some advice from Andy, and I think one of the really neat things that Amy and I have taken from Andy and Laura is um, their walk slash prayer time together. Um, I think there's probably a lot of us that might be watching this that are sort of intimidated by the idea that if I ask my husband or if I ask my wife for prayer time together, um, it's going to be awkward, it's going to be weird, or... Um, what's the, is that 45 minutes? Is that an hour? Is that an hour and a half? Like, what is the expectation here? Cause I can't do that. That's just too much. And, um, two things. Um, if you have not read the Greek book, how to pray, I think it's a profound resource. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're not good at reading, just listen to it in the car, right? It's so good, man. Yeah. Just right? the way he reads it. He's yeah. awesome. And we all like, just like you're saying, Phil, all the pastors have read it, all the elders have yeah. read it. We have yeah. all, it's been unanimous. Everybody has said, this has helped yeah. me so much. It's it's Greg, but it's Greek all Greg. Greg. <laughs> it's got an E and an I in there. Yeah. It's a little bit Potato, tricky. But the heart of what I'm trying to say is close enough. <laughs> um, and, then, and then part of what we took from them was like the idea that, you know, we try and set aside time for us to take a walk together or take a hike together or something like that. We're not, we're not like praying out loud the entire time. We wait for the last five to 10 minutes and then we pray together for the last five to 10 minutes. And that's been great. And what it then also opened the door to is like last week, we didn't have time to take our walk or take our hike. What we ended up doing is chatting in my, you know, on the couch for what ended up being like 45 minutes in an evening as the kids were getting ready to go to bed. And it sort of almost became natural that we ended that time Mm -hmm. for the last five or 10 minutes just praying together. That's Um, cool. It does not have to be 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And if you have a husband or wife that's intimidated by that idea specifically, five to 10 minutes is awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, praying with Laura has, has been such a gift and, um, it, for years it, it wasn't a consistent thing, but just, um, believing that, man, we have an enemy that hates us. Man, this thing is, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't want to stay. It close does not. To you. We, I'm literally about to talk about an enemy that we have. <laughs> He is no, he's at work in the mic your stand. Your microphone just is running away from down. your mouth. That's good. I'm going to hold it. We have right, an enemy that wants to destroy us um, and wants to bring us down. Um, and yeah. our wife is not the enemy. Our spouse is not the enemy. And when we come together to pray together, um, significant yeah. thing, things happen in the spiritual realm. And, you know, that we've not talked a lot about that today, but... Um, 
prayer changes things in the spiritual realm yeah. i wholeheartedly believe that and so often we can get focused on the here and now and the the visible but the invisible world that is all around um is is crazy and uh, i think that we don't recognize that anywhere near enough and so um we're in a battle in a spiritual mm -hmm. battle um and we have an enemy that wants to bring us down and it, it man prayer changes things and yeah. it, it brings uh not only does it bring comfort and relief, but it can change uh, change uh, in those moments of, of darkness uh, when we bring the Lord into those situations. Yeah. yeah. And I just, uh, and I've talked to about it in a couple of ways, but I really think that um, as we're going through and trying to find our rhythms or our patterns, um, uh, I think one of the biggest burdens was when I finally just stopped being worried about if I was doing it right or wrong, if I was um, talking too much or not, enough, like mm. all of those things of analyzing it and just being intentional and being like, I'm just going to do it and stopped. I felt like there was a big burden that was let off. And then I feel like God was very faithful to encourage mm. me like, no, he he just wants a relationship with us. He just wow. wants to hear from us and hear our hearts and be a part of that. And I think um, for someone like me that's in my head about right and wrong and being kind of legalistic about certain things, mm -hmm. letting go of that and realizing that um, whether I've done it every day or not done it every day or – but I am trying to be intentional and continue to seek through. That is where I've really seen his faithfulness. And so I think for people out there that are like, I don't do this at all, or um, I don't even know where to begin. Like, even if that one thing doesn't work out, just keep forging forward. And God will lead you through the path yeah. of how he wants to meet with you. Yeah, that, and and it'll is, come together. And I yeah. believe every season is going to look a little different. Yeah, that that is such good advice. Just to not wait for the perfect thing to come, but just to move forward in that. Right. Just to keep doing it. Yeah. yeah, and and the thing I'll you know that this relates to other things I'll say that I'll just throw in also is, um, don't be shy about incorporating movement. Um, like God has put yeah. us in mm -hmm. physical bodies. Yes. And and it's interesting because you'll see even uh, a lot of times in other cultures you'll you'll see believers when they pray and sometimes there is sort of like they're standing and they're leaning forward and leaning back. Others pray and they're raising their like God has put us in physical bodies. You know we do physical baptisms to represent a spiritual reality. We take physical bread and juice or wine, you know, to to represent a spiritual reality. So I just I think. Um, the idea of sort of saying prayer is sitting in a chair. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe it's kneeling, maybe it's standing, maybe it's walking, maybe it's riding the bike, maybe it's driving, you know? So I just, it, not everybody will need to do this. And, and some people may feel like the stillness helps them more, but um, I've just experienced so many people that have felt liberated by the idea of, wait, I could do that? Like that, mm. that's allowed. It's helped me a ton. So God's put us in these bodies. We respond to them. Um, don't be afraid to for movement to be a part of your prayer life. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say thanks to the three. I, I've been looking forward to this. I love doing this. And and similar to what you said, Phil, I, I feel privileged to get to work with the team that we have and that we get to work together and that the things that we shared, there was a lot of commonality, but it's different for all four of us. We're approaching this differently, but we're all approaching the same Father through the same Son and the power of the same Spirit looking to connect our hearts with Him. So thanks so much to each of you for sharing during this time. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, yeah thank you. Great. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you to all of you who took the time to watch or to listen to this. Like I said, we, we do episodes of The Christian Contrast every two weeks. So we'll be back two weeks with another episode. You're going to see the other four members of our pastoral team doing the same thing. And you're going to end up with four other sets of great ideas and suggestions and encouragement for your heart and all of that. And also, if you have questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, um, I love to check the comments um, on YouTube. You can find all the back episodes of Christian Contrast on the YouTube channel for Life Bible Fellowship Church or at our church webpage, lbf.church. Um, like I said, I like to go back and if there's questions or feedback, I like to interact with those because we wanna invite that interaction. 
So thanks so much for taking the time to watch and to listen to this. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode.